It's been well over three months since the plague began. I'll never know for sure how many people this plague has infected. All I know for sure is that this plague turns people into zombies. I know how they look like, but I never came into contact with any of the infected yet. Thank goodness for that. I've barricaded myself in my own home, like a prisoner. I had no choice but to turn my home into a factory. No one's available to keep the water, the electricity, or the gas running. I have to rely on my own power generators to keep some of the basic electronics running. Keeping the generators running has been a serious issue, as I expected. There are some days that I feel like as if I'm the only survivor alive and unaffected. Deep down inside, I know that I am not alone. There are other survivors out there. Far away, I don't know. Close by, I don't know. I know that I have to make contact with survivors. Without contact, survival is pointless. Who am I? Sean Lee Edwards. I'm just another regular citizen who wants to survive this apocalypse. As I wait to see if help will come, I watched the clock ticking. Seeing that the time goes by very slowly. the power generators will hold up the power for a few days more. For me, that's a very short time. Some of the food supplies had to go really quick, because once the power goes out, it will be a matter of time before some of the food supplies will spoil. I've been asking myself, how much more must I wait for help to come? The real questions are, is help really coming? How much longer will I survive without going on a scavenge hunt for food? Water, gasoline, and potentially, weapons. And how many of the infected are out there, lurking in the shadows, waiting to strike when they can? Well, I'll figure that out tomorrow morning. Tomorrow is another day.
I know I will not last if I isolate myself like this. I have to go search for some supplies. I will have to take my risks against the affected. This apocalypse is like a game of zombie roulette. But one thing for certain, this is not a game. It's the real thing. New word from the nation's top scientists on the zombie virus. They released information saying that the symptoms to watch for are aggression, foaming from the mouth, and deterioration of motor skills, and an unbelievable hunger. Be advised that if an infected becomes hostile, the only way to harm them is to shoot them in the head. New word from the nation's top scientists on the zombie virus. They released information saying that the symptoms to watch for are aggression, foaming from the mouth, deterioration of motor skills, and an unbelievable hunger. Be advised that if the infected becomes hostile, the only way to harm them is to shoot them in the head. Three months after I isolated myself in my own home, I finally decided to leave the house, risking my life against the infected. Luckily, during my search for supplies, I did not see one infected zombie. Yet. The whole entire city seems to be deserted, as I expected. For all I know, the infected could be hiding in the shadows from the sun's radiation. At least some of them are smart enough to hide. After spending nearly four hours searching throughout the entire city as much as I can, I have managed to scavenge some supplies. Food, water, gas, weapons, but no survivors. I dare not to search for survivors in any major locations, such as hospitals, police stations, football stadiums, prisons, and shopping malls. Those major locations are either too populated with the infected, or it's just too dangerous with gangs, thugs, or mobs in potential control. I'm better off as a lone wolf, so that way I do not drag too much attention from either dangerous criminals or the infected. As I returned home, I was thinking about the beach. It would really be nice to go to the beach, just laying off in the soft sand, listening to the ocean, and thinking about nothing at all. Later that night, I could not sleep at all. I've always kept in mind that once I fall asleep, I am completely defenseless. I'll just have to keep myself busy by scouting the entire house when necessary. You know, I really wish that this apocalypse is over with already. I'm beginning to get tired of it. I try to read some books, so that way the time can pass quickly. That's what I've been doing for the last three months. Waiting. While I was just sitting down and waiting for the time to pass, I kept on having flashbacks from all the abandoned buildings that I have witnessed. The images just won't stay out of my mind. Well, I'll just continue reading books while I still can. It's the only thing that's been around ever since the beginning of time.
mobs. With no security whatsoever, I am never guaranteed to survive against such a crowd. Without joining them, I'll never know for sure how many people there are, how many guns they have, or where they are really going. I decided not to join any mob because they will attract way too many of the infected. Heck, for all I may know, they could attract up to tens of thousands of the infected against just around a couple hundred members of a mob. This wasn't the first time that a mob has passed through my own home. I'm pretty darn lucky to not have any mob or any infected attracted to my home. As I lie down on the floor, I successfully tried all that I could do to stay down so I wouldn't be shot by accident. After encountering all the gunshot noises from the mob, I've been asking myself, whom is more dangerous? Mobs or the infected? Two dreams in one night, that's a first. First I get shot, and then I appear in a mansion full of blood and rust. That is something I'll probably never forget. where I am. I've decided that it's no longer safe to remain indoors. Let's be real, the rescue team is not coming at all. Plus, there's a big storm on its way, and if I want to survive this apocalypse, I will have to meet up with the survivors at Mount Coover. Leaving my home is one of the hardest decisions I have ever made in my life. 